So many people are going through spiritual awakenings across the world right now, and many of us don't even know that that's what's happening to us. Spirituality can seem like a rabbit hole, and it's very common for us to get confused and lost as we're starting out. But that confusion ends today. I've shot this video as a guide to spirituality for beginners, but don't be fooled. The tips that I have in this video are going to be great and actionable, both for beginners and experienced souls alike. I'm going to share eight actionable tips that I am still learning and deepening today, seven years after my spiritual awakening first started. And I hope that these tips are going to help you stay centered and at peace in your spiritual path too. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the heart alchemist here to help you open your heart, heal your past and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell. So you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram also, where I publish weekly tips that you're not going to find here on YouTube. Okay, let's get started with the eight crucial tips that I wanted to share with you for when you're starting out on your spiritual journey, but also for experienced people also. So here they are. Tip number one is to ask questions. <laughs> now it's not just any questions that you're going to be asking, but these are really deep questions. They are really, they are soul questions. And a lot of us, we start out with our spiritual awakening as happened with me. We start out because something horrible happens in our lives. And that was, that's what triggers our spiritual awakening, but your spiritual awakening going into spirituality, it doesn't have to start with something dramatic happening in your life. There are a lot more people that are now waking up spontaneously. And usually the awakening process starts when certain questions start to come up to the surface. <laughs> and those are the questions that I'm talking about in this first tip. Now, these questions, these deep existential questions, questions like, what am I doing here? What is my life all about? What is life all about? <laughs> is there more to my life than this? These are, these are some of the deep existential questions that we start asking ourselves as we start going down the spiritual path. Now these questions, I'm putting this as the number one tip here because these questions, sometimes they remain buried in us for a really long time. And we just keep pushing them down because we know inherently that the moment we start asking these questions and the moment we start contemplating the answers, then things are going to have to radically shift in our lives. And sometimes we're not ready for that. And I remember that in my own life for years before my spiritual awakening, I woke up in 2013 and before my spiritual awakening for years, I had these really deep, they were, they weren't even existential questions. I felt them as kind of a, as kind of a gnaw. It was like, um, uh, they were, they were just pulling at me. It was a knot I had inside of me. And, and these questions were just kind of trying to come up to the surface, but I wouldn't let them. <laughs> I wouldn't let them because I knew that if I started to let these questions come up, my life was going to explode. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. And so I kept pushing the questions down and I kept living life like everybody else robotically, you know, going to work, doing this, doing that until eventually my life fell apart. And then I had to ask the existential questions once my life fell apart, but for you, it doesn't have to be this way. So your life doesn't need to fall apart. You can start asking these profound existential questions right now. You can start contemplating them. You can start just letting your questions come up to the surface and the questions, they're not the same for all of us. So your soul questions can be different from my soul questions. The point is that you have questions within you you that want to be asked. <laughs> okay. You have questions within you that want to be asked. And the more that you are curious and open to those questions coming up, the more you are curious to go into the questions without freaking out, without having a panic attack or going into anxiety, the more easily you can start that spiritual path in a nice soft way. Now, if you've already started your spiritual path, but you still feel like there are existential questions that still need to be answered. For example, what's my soul mission? I have a lot of people reach me where they've been on their spiritual path for years, but they still haven't quite honed in on their soul mission. They still haven't answered that, that existential deep question for them. So the questions are going to come up for you sort of, uh, not randomly, but they're going to come up spontaneously as it's time. All right. Your soul will know when to pull certain questions up. The point here is for you to remain curious that that is the main thing I want to 
I want to emphasize in this tip is always remain curious and let whatever questions want to come up, let them come up, sit with them and be really courageous to go into these questions, to have them answered. And then once you have them answered, you're going to need to follow through with action. Things are going to need to change in your life when you really answer these existential deep questions, but start with just being curious and letting the questions come up spontaneously. Tip number two is quiet the mind. <laughs> now I feel like a broken record sometimes in my videos because I really do emphasize in a lot of my videos, I emphasize the quieting of the mind as a crucial, crucial tip. And the reason that I talk so much about this is because a lot of times when we're starting on the spiritual path, when we're getting into spirituality, when we are first awakening, the mind is really one of the few things that can hold us back from, uh, from the deepening of our spiritual awakening. And the mind can really, really try and block you and make things 10 times worse for you. So the quieting of the mind, I put this right at the top of the list because this is super important. The more that you can quiet your mind, the more you can ease into spirituality to ease into your spiritual path. So let me repeat that again, because that's how important this is. The more that you can quiet your mind, the easier it is for you to kind of ease into your spiritual path, ease into your spiritual awakening. Okay. Now I've, I've talked many times in multiple other videos on how you can quiet the mind, but I'll reemphasize here. You're going to quiet the mind with ding, ding. Here's my first one. Ding, ding. <laughs> this one's always, this is always at the top of my list. Meditation, meditation, meditation. Okay. You can pick any style of meditation from mindfulness meditation to shamanic meditation, shamanic journey, whatever energy meditation. It doesn't matter. There are a bunch of different styles of meditation. But the point is you're going to need discipline to just sit down every day and do some form of meditation, because that is the number one way that you can quiet your mind down. And it doesn't take a lot of time. So you don't need to meditate for hours a day in order to quiet your mind. You can start with 10 minutes, then moving into 20 minutes. And that's, that's fine for meditation for the whole day. And you, it will have dramatic effects on your mind and it'll start quieting it down, but it can be other, uh, other things too, like dance, walk walking in nature, um, exercise too works with really well for some people. They go out for a run and suddenly their mind just calms down. So exercise can work well. Anytime you move your body, body movement works really well because when I'm in my body, I'm not in my mind. Okay. So, so any activity that brings you into your body is great for quieting the mind. You can also go into artistic things, creative things like art and music also quiets the mind really well also. So sometimes Sometimes I'll like to put some piano or some classical music in the background or just some meditation ambience music, and it'll immediately quiet and calm my mind down. All right. So these are some of the things that you can do to quiet your mind, but you know, get creative and figure out in your own life, what activities do you do? that seems to quiet the mind down and start integrating those into your everyday life. Now, the reason I want to go a little deeper into this, because I don't want to seem like that, like this is just, you know, a random superficial tip because it's not, I want to go into the reason why it's so important to quiet the mind, uh, when you're getting into spirituality, when you're getting into, uh, your spiritual awakening. And the reason is that when you start going into the rabbit hole, that spirituality, when you start deepening your spirituality, something funny is going to happen. It's not really funny when it happens, but it's funny afterwards. Something funny is going to happen. And that is as you're going down the rabbit hole of spirituality, as you deepen into spirituality, your ego is going to freak out because the more I go into spirituality, the more I go into my own spiritual awakening, the less the ego knows <laughs> because spirituality is way beyond the understanding of the mind way beyond spirituality transcends the mind. It transcends the intelligence of the mind and the intelligence of the ego or your identity mechanism. So the moment you start to go deeper than what your mind is capable of understanding at any given moment, your ego can trigger and it perceives this deepening of spirituality as something dangerous. It triggers and it can go into controlling mode. So it can start trying to control your spirituality or your spiritual awakening. 
And when your mind does that, when it goes into overdrive, I've had people reach me where they're like, I cannot quiet my mind. My mind is just going a thousand miles an hour. I have no idea how to stop it. Okay. And so that's when really the ego can start really creating a lot of drama in your life because the more the ego activates, the more it's going to try to control the situation. And you can't go further into your spirituality if your mind's trying to control, because again, to go into the spirituality rabbit hole means I have to transcend send the mind because the mind knows nothing about spiritual awakenings. That's new territory for the mind. And so I have to be able to have a quiet centered mind. A quiet centered mind allows me to go deeper in my spiritual awakening. The deeper that I go in my spiritual awakening, the more I reach my soul gifts, the more I reach my soul, the more I understand what I'm doing here, the more I'm on my soul path. So it's really important that I deepen my spirituality and that I deepen my spiritual awakening. But if I let this ego activate, it's going to make it a lot harder to get there. Tip number three is heal the past. <laughs> this is the huge emphasis of my work with clients is to help them heal the past. Because when you start going into spirituality, when you start going on your spiritual journey, one of the first key things that I help people do is for them to realize that there is a lot of dead weight on their energy system. There's a lot of dead weight in your heart. There's a lot of dead weight just in your body in terms of things that have happened to you in the past that are not healed. Okay. We all have unhealed issues. Some of us more significantly than others. Some of us have significant childhood trauma that we haven't healed. Some of us have, you know, traumatizing events that have happened to us, not just in childhood, but afterwards. So some of us do have more to heal than others, but all of us in regardless where we come from, all of us have experienced pain in life. And sometimes those painful things that have happened to us in our lives have really created wounds that we need to heal because every wound that is unhealed, remember this, here's a ding ding. <laughs> this is an energy alchemy side note for you. Okay. Each wound that is unhealed creates an enormous weight on my energy system. And it doesn't just create a weight. I want to give you an image so that you could really understand what unhealed pain and unhealed trauma does to us. Think of an unhealed wound from your past, whether it's a broken up relationship that just ended horribly and you never had any closure, uh, whether it's, you know, a dramatic death of a loved one, trauma in your childhood, sexual abuse, whatever it is, whatever it is for all of us, it's different. But whenever there's something painful that happens to you that is unhealed, it creates a wound in your energy system and in your body because your body houses all of your trauma. But the way that I like to see this is I want you to think of these wounds, these unhealed wounds as tumors. Okay. Because they are very similar to tumors in the way that they, um, that they function in your body and in your esoteric layers in your electromagnetic field. So what happens is an unhealed wound, it starts, it really functions like a tumor. So a cancerous tumor, the reason that a cancerous tumor makes you sick is because that cancerous tumor is going to start sucking energy from the surrounding cells. It's going to take life force away from healthy tissue in order to feed itself. And so it keeps growing inside of your body. And each time the tumor keeps growing, it keeps taking more life force away from healthy tissue. Eventually your body breaks down and that's when you go to the doctor and you find out that you have a cancerous tumor somewhere. And it's because that tumor has been sucking life force out of your body for a really long time sometimes. Okay. And so this image of a cancerous tumor is essentially the same thing that happens with an unhealed wound in our lives and in our bodies. Okay. What happens is that unhealed wound from an energy perspective, it sort of creates the same mechanism that a tumor does. It starts to siphon energy from your system and from your body. And eventually your body will start to break down also. Okay. So it, it works in much the same way. So when you start going on your spiritual journey, your energy, energy starts to shift because that's a natural consequence of getting into spirituality, of starting your spiritual path, of starting your spiritual awakening, your energy starts to shift upward. Okay. With all the stuff that you're doing, with all the work that you're doing, with all the introspection and all of that, your energy starts to ascend. It starts to go up. 
but you can only go up as far as you let go of dead weight. <laughs> okay. So one of the first things that I always counsel people to do is to find out if they still have unhealed pain within them. And you know, you know, if you have unhealed things within you, right? You just know it may not be something you want to touch, but you know that it's there. Okay. And so what I recommend is you start healing those issues because the more that you heal those issues, you literally let go of the wound, you heal the wound. And that means that there's nothing there anymore. That's sucking life force out of you. So it's sort of like uh, healing the, the tumor, uh, you know, and it's gone. All right. Once it's gone, it doesn't suck any more energy from surrounding tissues. It's the same thing with any type of wounds that we have within us. Okay. So start that healing work, go as deep as in your healing as you possibly can. And I know that this is a hard one. I know that this is a hard step. And sometimes we don't even know how to start with our healing because it's so repressed in us. I have people sending me messages sometimes and they say, you know, I know I have a lot to heal because I can feel it in me, but I don't even know how to start. And I get a lot of these messages. So I'm going to, um, I've prepared a playlist for you. Okay. So it's going to pop up here. I prepared a playlist for you of my top healing videos. Okay. So if you haven't seen that playlist yet, I just made it up. Actually, I just prepared it in this video. These are my top healing videos. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. These videos are going to help you with all that you need to know about how to start healing old wounds. So watch those videos, watch that playlist after you finish watching this one. But the essential thing is dedicate yourself to healing wounds, dedicate yourself to healing your past. And that immediately is going to make a huge shift in your energy. And you're going to, you're going to go up. You're going to ascend a lot faster. Tip number four is to balance yin and yang energies. Okay. <laughs> Boy, this one, let me tell you this, this is one that it took me a really long time to understand and to be able to work with. And this is something I really wish I had known <laughs> when I started my spiritual awakening, because it took me a lot of tumbling around and, and, you know, bashing my head against the wall to finally learn how to work with these two energies. So the balancing of yin and yang energy, feminine and masculine energy is is crucial when you start your spiritual journey. And when you're going through your spiritual awakening, it's crucial because all of us, especially in the Western world, all of us have, whether we're women or men, we have what I call learned masculine dominance. And that means that we have all been trained and programmed by our families, society, our countries, cultures to be in masculine energy and masculine dominant energy. This is the energy of getting stuff done, hustling, working hard for your dreams. <laughs> so we're all templated with this. And that means that we've all learned to have masculine dominance. Masculine dominance has been around the, around the, you know, the planet for thousands thousands of years. And we are now just coming into a correction of that energy in these times now, as you're watching this video. So the balancing of these two energies is crucial. It's going to make your life so much easier during your spiritual awakening. When you learn how to do this, when you learn that we all have a learned masculine dominant energy, and why this presents a problem for spirituality is because that learned masculine energy, it's not just masculine. A lot of times it's wounded masculine. And that means that a lot of times our masculine side is wounded in the sense that he becomes hyper vigilant and he becomes hyper protective. Okay. So these are two things I want you to remember about wounded masculine energy. It becomes hyper vigilant and hyper protective, meaning that your masculine young energy is constantly constantly holding his fists up, ready to punch someone in the face. <laughs> okay. So young energy, when it's wounded, it's very vigilant. It's always looking for something wrong to fix. It's always looking for an enemy. It's always looking to protect you. He always has his fists up. All right. Now this presents a problem when you go on your spiritual path, because when you start going into spirituality, when you start going within, you're really being called to work with the yin energy, because that's the energy that goes within masculine goes out feminine goes in. And so if your masculine energy is constantly going, no, I need to protect you. No, 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 we're not doing this. You're not going to be able to go into your spiritual awakening as deeply as you could. If you had a balanced masculine energy and a balanced feminine energy. Okay. 
So your work is going to be to slowly disarm that masculine energy, to slowly allow yourself to unlearn this masculine dominance that, that we're trained with, slowly unlearn it, talk your masculine down, bring that hypervigilant, hyperprotective energy, bring it down, calm the masculine, tell the masculine there's nothing to worry about. He doesn't need to protect you from every anything. Everything is fine. <laughs> you see, I do a lot of mantra work and I have been doing a lot of mantra work when it comes to working with the, with a lot of things, but especially with an overprotective masculine. Once that masculine energy calms down, then you can come into the feminine and start learning about the feminine and working with feminine energy. And the reason that I start with the masculine is because until you're able to calm the masculine down and help him disarm himself, he's not going to let you get to your feminine energy because he's going to be in protection mode. Okay. So you got to disarm the masculine first. You've got to soothe him, put his arms down, relax. You've got to help him relax. And once you go there, then it's easier to start working with feminine energy. Now, when you get into feminine energy, that's a whole other story because that's fun. That's a lot of fun because a lot of us, we don't even know how to connect with our feminine energy. It's so repressed in us. And so this is a learning game. <laughs> we have to learn how to work with our feminine energy. We have to learn how to work with the yin. We have to learn that power. Yin energy is just this pure power. It's, it's life force itself. It's the life force that creates life. That's feminine energy. It's so powerful. It's so raw. It's in your body. It's a very embodied energy. It is in your body. So for you to connect to feminine energy, you have to be in your body, come into your body, out of your mind, into your body and start connecting more and more with your feminine side. This is the intuitive side. This is the feeling side. This is the side that is just pure potential and pure creativity. And, and the more that you can connect with her and a great way to start connecting with your feminine energy is first to come into your body. That's another great way. Anytime you come into your body, you're starting to embody feminine energy. But another great way to work with your feminine energy also is to develop your intuition. That's another feminine characteristic and intuition. You know, there's a, there's a, a, a very interesting way that I see intuition. I don't see it as a mind thing. Science studies intuition as a subconscious mind phenomenon. I don't see it that way. It's a heart phenomenon to me. So for you to get deeper into intuition, I'm going to leave you another video here. I go really deep into what intuition is and how you can work with it. And that's a great way for you to get into your feminine energy. But the point is you're going to learn to bring that masculine energy down and bring that feminine up. So they are balanced. The more that these energies are balanced and you can learn to go into your feminine more, I would actually go beyond saying balanced. I would say that as you're deepening your spiritual awakening, you need the feminine energy energy to come in more powerfully because she's the healer. She's the intuitive part of you. She's the feeler. She's the introspective part of you. The one that looks in the one that sits with wounds, the one that heals, the one that's nurturing. So having a little bit more feminine energy when you're doing this healing work and when you're doing this spiritual work is really important. So you're going to have to learn how to reset your energy balance within you. Tip number five is be gentle with yourself. <laughs> Whoa, this tip, this tip. Oh my gosh. It could have come in handy for me because you know, something really interesting happened when I went through my spiritual awakening and it's a little bit uh, connected to the tip that I just talked about before about yin and yang energies. When I went through my spiritual awakening, I was still in significant masculine dominance and I didn't know better. And so I went head first into my spiritual awakening, but I went head first into my spiritual awakening with my masculine dominating. And what ended up happening was I went into my spiritual awakening really rough really aggressively. It's almost like I pushed myself. I was really aggressive with myself. I wanted to go deeper into the spiritual awakening. My life had fallen apart. And so, okay, fine. If my life didn't work out before now, I'm going to go head first into my spiritual awakening, but I'm going to do this fast and aggressively. <laughs> you see that's masculine energy. And what ended up happening was I was just not kind to myself initially. And it took me a while to understand. I just kept hitting my head against the walls because again, like I just said, 
said in the tip before, you can't go through your spiritual awakening in masculine dominant energy because the masculine will fight a lot during the spiritual awakening. And it's the feminine that's so crucial in the deepening of your, of your spiritual path. It's crucial, crucial, crucial. The masculine can't do this type of work. It's not a part of the masculine energy. They are both beautiful energies and they're needed in different times. It's just in this specific phase, when you're going through the deepening of your spiritual awakening, the feminine is the one that you really need to be working with very strongly. And so this, this be kind to yourself. This is another way of saying, bring the masculine, chill the masculine down, come into that feminine energy and learn to be so gentle with yourself. You know, so gentle, come into your heart, come into that feminine energy, that nurturing mothering energy and allow yourself to feel self-love self-compassion, radical, radical compassion for yourself because you've been doing the best that you can. You're doing the best that you can, and you are going deeper and deeper every day in your spiritual awakening, but you can't go very deep. If you're harsh with yourself, if you hate yourself, if you talk down to yourself, if you're not kind to yourself, there's only so far you can go because the deeper in your spiritual awakening that you go, the more connected you are with source energy, with your soul, with the creator of everything, with oneness that has created everything. And you can't be connected to that energy if you're in self-hatred, if you're in self-criticism, because that's totally opposite of the way the creator sees you. So for you to come into that oneness, into that unity consciousness more and more and more, you have to learn to be gentle, to love yourself, and to really feel for yourself what source feels for you, okay? So this is a crucial, crucial step that's a kind of a continuation of the tip before. Gentle yourself, beautiful soul. Be kind to yourself. Chill when you need to chill. Be loving to yourself. Really, really nurture that tender, loving kindness for yourself. And that's going to change everything on your spiritual path. Tip number six is see the genius in life. <laughs> this one is really crucial, especially when you're going through phases of your life and your spirituality and spiritual awakening that aren't easy, okay? Because what happens is sometimes when we're going through difficult phases in our lives, we can really push away and it can be very difficult for us to see that there is an inherent genius in everything that's going on. Okay. So as you're deepening your spiritual awakening, really be conscious of the fact that there is an intelligence. There's an intelligent plan that your soul has set out. There's an intelligent plan in place, even if you can't see it. So sometimes you can be like just completely immersed in your own wounds and you can be trying to heal this and you can't see up from down and left from right because you're stuck in your cesspool of your subconscious mind trying to heal things. And so things can get messy during a spiritual awakening. And as you're deepening, deepening your spirituality, that sometimes you could just miss the whole point of things that are going on in your life. But there is a genius, there is a profound intelligence at play underpinning everything. And the more that you come into that knowing, the easier your awakening is gonna be and the easier it's going to be to deepen into your spiritual practices. Even if you don't know consciously what that intelligent plan is at the moment, even if your mind doesn't know it at that moment, trust, 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 this is the operating word here, okay? Trust that there is a genius operating. Trust that there is an intelligent plan that's underpinning all of your experiences and that that plan will eventually be revealed. And when you look back, you're gonna say, oh, that's why that happened. <laughs> But in the meantime, if you can't see the intelligence of the plan that's playing out in your life right now, just revert back to, I trust, I trust that this is for my highest good. I trust that this is my, my soul's plan. I trust, I trust. And you just keep living from this trust, understanding that there is this intelligence that you will get someday. You're going to understand what's going on. But just for now, if you can't consciously understand what the intelligent plan is underpinning your experiences, just trust into it, surrender into it, and just feel that trust and eventually things will become clearer to you. Tip number seven is to make friends with the present. <laughs> now this means that we are going to be, and if you've been doing your meditation and quieting your mind, as I said in the first tip, it, when you start doing that, when you start quieting your mind, it's gonna be much easier to live in the present moment. 
But this tip here really just, uh, the emphasis that I want to bring here is when we start to awaken and when we start to go down into our spiritual awakening, it's sort of like our, the timelines, linear time collapses for us because really the past and the future, they don't really exist. Only the now moment exists. <laughs> Only the now moment exists. And when we start going into our spiritual path, we really start realizing how much of our time and how much of our lives has been spent either thinking about the past or imagining the future. We've been all over the place for years and years. We do this. We live in the past. We imagine the future. We're, we're constantly in the past or future and we're very rarely in the present moment. Well, as you deepen your spiritual awakening, you're going to learn that past and present don't matter. Boom. I'm coming into the present moment because it's from the present moment that I have all of my power only from the present moment. And so when you, the more that you stay present, the more your spiritual path is going to unfold with a lot more ease. You're going to be able to listen to your guidance. You're going to be able to have access to synchronicities. A lot of stuff is going to go, is going to go on when you're in the present moment, not to mention you're going to feel calm and at peace because I only start to feel anxiety, stress, all kinds of different emotions. I only start to feel these emotions when I'm either thinking about the past or projecting into the future or worried about the future. That's where these other messier emotions come in. If I'm in the present moment, I tend to be more at peace and more centered. Okay. And there's also something else, the term that I wanted to bring into, into this, into this tip, that's going to be important for you. Being in the present moment also means that I'm going to learn how to practice what's called radical acceptance. <laughs> radical acceptance means that I have got to be okay with where I am right now. Okay. Ding, ding. <laughs> this is crucial, beautiful soul. Okay. I'm going to repeat it again. You have got to be okay where you are right now, because if you're not okay, where you are right now, you can't move anywhere. <laughs> you can't move anywhere because you're going to be, if I'm not accepting of the present moment, I'm going to be tearing myself apart inside. And that means that I'm just going to keep co-creating in my outside world. I'm going to keep co-creating chaos and I won't know what step to take because I'm totally not at ease inside. So I won't be able to listen to my soul. I won't be able to listen to my guidance. I'm going to be all over the place. And that means that my life is going to be a lot more chaotic. When I come into radical acceptance, it really means that I use this mantra. Everything is okay right now. That's a great mantra. Everything is okay right now. I accept the present. The moment you accept the present, a lot of times people say to me, I don't want to do that. I don't want to accept the present because my present moment sucks. My situation sucks right now. Why would I want to accept it? If I accept it, doesn't it mean I'm just going to stay in it? No, <laughs> no, that's actually the other way around. This is a common misconception. A lot of times people think that when they accept the present moment, it means that they're going to say, stay in a sucky situation if that's where they're in right now but it's not true. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You're going to stay in a sucky situation until you accept the present moment and all of its wisdom that it has to teach you. And then you'll be able to move from it from a position of power. Okay. So radical acceptance of where I am right now is key for me in moving forward. So I'll give you a, you know, a down to earth example that sometimes I receive emails from people about, and I work with clients with, so I'm going to give you this practical example to help you. Let's say you're working at a job right now that you totally hate and you just want to get the heck out of there. You hate going to your job every day. Okay. The fact that you hate going to your job every day means already, it's already telling me that you're not in acceptance. That's why you're just tearing yourself apart when you go to work every day. But the first thing that I do to help people move out of that, uh, of that phase in their lives isn't to tell them, well, get another job. That's not what I usually say. <laughs> what we usually start to work on with clients when they reach me is we have to become okay with where you are right now. And then things are going to start to change. So the way that we work on that is we change the perception that that person has about their current job. And that could be done very quickly. The moment you change the perception that you hold about your present moment, the moment that you change the perception, ding, ding perception, meaning the way that you see the situation, when you change the way that you see the situation, 
the situation itself starts to change. Okay. And so coming into this radical acceptance is the first step in moving powerfully from the present moment into a future moment. Okay. So this is crucial. Radical acceptance coming into the present moment, not worrying about the past or the, or the, or the future, just collapsing all of that into the present moment and being more and more in the now moment will create a huge, huge, powerful energy that surges you forward. The eighth tip is one of my favorites and it's trust your guidance. <laughs> the reason this is one of my favorites is because, you know, I, I, I can tell you with a hundred percent certainty that if it weren't for my spirit guides, I would not be here because I had a really difficult spiritual awakening that lasted multiple years that was really difficult. And if it weren't for the trust that I had in my guidance, I would not have made it through for sure, for sure. Because there are moments where I was completely alone. I had no one around me to help me. And I really, the only, the only reliance I had was on my spirit team. Okay. This is crucial. When you start to deepen your spirituality, when you start to go into that rabbit hole of spirituality, you start to transcend the mind. When you transcend the mind, you have to go into a deeper knowing your heart, your soul, your higher self, your guides. You have to go into these quantum parts of you, the parts of you that aren't in flesh and blood. And in order to connect with those parts, you have to be quiet. You have to be trusting. You have to learn how to communicate with your guidance, whether it's your soul, your higher self, or your spirit team or source itself, but trust that guidance. You are never alone. Sometimes I have people reaching out to me. They're going through a dark night of the soul, or they're going through some, some difficult phase in their spirituality. And sometimes they reach out to me and they say, I'm just all alone in this world. Nobody cares about me. I'm totally alone. And that is never the case. That's never the case. You are never alone. You are so loved. You are so guided. There's a whole team of guides that's constantly waiting for you to connect with them, for you to give them permission. And they'll start flooding, not only with energy, but they'll start flooding you with messages, with assistance, with synchronicities, all kinds of things can happen when you trust your guidance, but you have to do the, you have to do your part, which is trusting. You have to go into that, into that trust. And you have to say, you know, you can even start out with saying, I have no idea how to connect. You could talk to your soul and you say, soul, I have no idea how to connect with you. Uh, guides, I have no idea. Angels, I have no idea how to connect with you. God or source, I have no idea how to connect with you, but I'm open to learn. <laughs> the moment that you open that door and you say, I am open to learning, everything changes for you, okay? And the deeper you go into this work, the more your heart opens. Remember this heart is the beautiful portal of your intuition. The more your heart opens, the more you go into guidance, the more guidance, clear guidance you receive. And just your life is going to change completely, completely. This is what happened in my own life. When I went through my spiritual awakening, I remember my whole life fell apart. And I remember the exact moment that I trusted my guidance for the first time. I was lying in bed. My life had just fallen apart. I was literally lying in bed in the darkness of my room and I was just staring up at the ceiling <laughs> and I just didn't know what to do with my life. My mind had lost all of its power. My mind had no answers. And you know, I, I was, had always been a very mind driven person. So this was a little scary. And I remember I was just in the dark and I remember that I called for a guide that I, that had, that I had really had admired since I was a child. I was raised Catholic and I had had a really strong relationship with Jesus, not so much the Jesus of the Bible that's talked about in the Bible, but I had a really strong affinity with the ascended master Jesus that came from my upbringing. And so in that moment, I had no one else to turn to. And I just remember I, I, I called Jesus out loud and I said, I don't know how to reach you, but I'm here. You're going to have to come and get me, but show me whatever you want. And the moment that I said that it was the first time that I astrally projected out of my body. <laughs> and you know, that, that, that's a whole other story. You can learn all about it in my first book. Here it is. Um, I published my first book and I talked about this. The first part of my autobiography, I talked about the story started here. Uh, I, that was the first time I had astrally projected and it was precisely because I called on a master on an ascended master that I admired and I was trusting and I surrendered into the process for you. It could be the same thing. Open up, 
trust the guidance, ask for the guidance to come in and it could come in. It doesn't have to come in in the form of a Jesus, but it can come in in the form of a Buddha. It can come in in the form of a Kuan Yin, an, an angel, an archangel, or it can come in the form of no form at all. You can just call for source energy directly and receive that energy in whatever form is highest for you. The point is you have to open up to that guidance and trust it and then listen to, to the guidance that's coming through for you. Pay attention to the synchronicities that come through for you. You are never alone. You are always guided. And the more that you trust and surrender and give permission to your guidance, the more you will be guided, the more heavily you will be guided, the more signs and synchronicities will come to you. And you will really be on your soul path pretty quickly when you start to, to when you start to work closely with your guidance. Okay. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, which one of these tips was your favorite and the one that you're going to implement first in your life. Let me know in the comments below, click here to subscribe to my channel or head over to my website where you can download some brand new free meditations that people have been really enjoying. And don't forget this playlist that I curated for you about deep healing. Go into that next. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I am out.